Now I would like to invite Professor Shibayama, a professor of Graduate School of Human and Environmental Studies of Kyoto University, to make a presentation. Aha. This is uh, Shibayama, thank you very much. So there were three presentations uh, about MMT, the details of the content of MMT. And therefore, as far as my presentation is concerned, in 2019, and it was uh, born in the 2000s, and how the impact uh, was increased. And I would like and to revisit the historical significance of MMT. Now, personally, I think it is uh, quite recent uh, when I came to know MMT. MMT was a big uh, uh, fashionable topic uh, in the world, and my colleagues uh, started to introduce MMT into the Japanese academics. So <clears throat> I belatedly started then to learn about it, and I immediately found it quite interesting. In particular, the money theory, which it really attracted me. In the past, so to speak, in the world of economics, when it comes to currency or money, or the real money. I think uh, the gold-based uh, system was over a long time ago, but uh, there was seems to be the currency system seems to be the extension uh, of the gold-based system. Uh, but uh, finally, this is a kind of a contemporary currency system, which is completely severed uh, from the gold-based system. And at the same time, with the introduction of this system, and after 1980s, new liberalism, uh, which it was a political ideology, it was uh, beat or defeated by this tool of MT MMT. Now, speaking of uh, neoliberalism, I think uh, Professor Mitchell who was talking about uh, the MMT was not committed to any kind of a specific regime. And I agree. That said, now, the defaults and drawbacks of the existing system can be highlighted by MMT. In the 1980s, uh, Reagan and Th Thatcher <coughs> And after those two leaders, uh, there was the economic, uh, common economic framework, which was adopted by industrialized nations, uh, the austerity policy. And that was the center uh, of the policy and to make a change to uh, the state policy. In the 1970s, on shock and Nixon shock, Nixon shock and all shock uh, in the right sequence. And industrialized world in the UK and the United States, there was a progression of inflation, and there was a stagflation that hit those two countries. And this kind of ideology was born out of this situation. In order to suppress inflation, austerity policy was a must. And in order to suppress inflation, there should be the separation of the central bank and the government, and the independence should be given to the central bank, who will introduce policy of austerity and reinvigorate economic growth. And for that to be achieved, the market-friendly policies well, in my turn, uh, capital friendly rather than economic economy friendly, and so the capital should be reinforced, and so that new businesses could be created, and that was the concept. Deregulation was part of it, and the shareholders, uh, the the dividend payment uh, to shareholders should be increased, and the lower taxes uh, on rich people, and that means. Uh, that uh, the rich people um, purchase more uh, goods, and that would have a trickle-down effect on the poorer people. And the interest groups such as labor unions and the cooperative, uh, uh, the agricultural cooperatives in the case of Japan, and the political connections with those interest groups uh, should be severed, and so that the government would be able um, to reinvigorate the competition out in the market. That was the kind of the idea that uh, symbolized by neoliberalism. 
And another tenet uh, was a globalization, opening the borders and the, uh, the flow of a trade uh, and the capital uh, was liberalized and harmonization of regulations were progressed. And under these circumstances, uh, and this concept of new liberalism or new conservatism was uh, advocated um, by uh, conservative parties, uh, in the case of Japan, a liberal democratic party. In the post-war era, there was a strong uh, the influence of uh, uh, social democracy, but into the 1990s, uh, after Thatcher and the Reagan era, Nakasone as well, uh, that they, the government, the, there were such ideas came out of the conservatives. And the leftists were against this kind of idea with the collapse of the Cold War. And after uh, the whole world was dominated by capitalism, the liberal wings, the left wings, uh, started to get out of the socialist uh, uh, concept and the new or the concept or ideology that partially adopted a new liberalism which was t represented by Clinton and Tony Blair in the UK so which was uh, represented by the concept of new labor this was a new liberal leftist so both leftists and the rightists um, they center their policies on uh, this kind of new liberalism. So there should have been no major differences between left and right. And what happened afterwards? Well, those uh, countries were successful uh, in suppressing inflation, but at the same time suffering from deflation. What was most uh, influential uh, was that the financial uh, crisis uh, uh, the frequency uh, of uh, the uh, financial crisis, GFC, or global financial crisis in Japan, it was an, uh, called uh, Lehman crisis. Uh, it was once in 100 years uh, level of crisis, and Eurozone was hard hit. And the Eurozone is uh, still suffering from the situation, and the situation is worsening, rather to say. And economic growth rate in the 1980s, there were some re economic reforms, and since then, the economic growth uh, did not recover. There was a gradual decline. Economic growth uh, is uh, slowing down for over the years. Uh, more recently, the, ma uh, the uh, mainstream uh, ma uh, economists uh, were talking about the secular stagnation. And turning to Europe, it is called the Jap Japanification. Uh, which is a country suffering from deflation and declining of the population. So these are the characteristics that uh, industrialized nations uh, will not be able to avoid. So Japan seems to be at, is kind of a top runner of those malaise uh, of industrialized uh, countries. At the same time, speaking uh, of uh, income gaps, and inequality, trickle-down effect that did not work. Uh, there is a separation of the rich people and the lower income people. There is also an issue of geographical differences. The urbanization, for one thing, in, in Japan, in Tokyo, there is a concentration of population. I'm from Tokyo, personally. I long lived in Kyoto. And sometimes I come back into Tokyo, and I was really surprised at the huge number of people. I, I sometimes think uh, that every day uh, is a festival day. Uh, but uh, in the, the provincial cities, there are only old people walking around on the street. This is a kind of a global phenomenon. Uh, the goods and services concentrate in, in cities uh, and uh, enjoying some kind of innovation. But away from those uh, center cities, uh, central cities, people are losing confidence and trust and hope. And the, uh, the, the landscape, uh, or the cityscape is uh, collapsing. Ten years ago, there was a financial crisis, but uh, there is a kind of a bubble relay. The bubble in the United States collapsed. Uh, but looking at the data in Northern Europe, and in Asia, there seems to be the bloating of the size of the debt. And what is highlighted is China. And probably at the same time, Hong Kong should also another focal point. 
the, the looking at the household the debt ratio Hong Kong is really high there are political demonstrations and that uh, dominate the newspapers um, but uh, looking at this, these uh, political movements if there is going to be a financial crisis added on it would complicate the situation in East Asia now if there's going to be a bubble burst uh, in some other areas and then another bubble will be burst in other areas elsewhere so this kind of situation cannot be stopped in fact that this is the reality of the 30 years uh, history of uh, capitalism now look uh, with the addition of uh, uh, the secular uh, stagnation the government itself will not be able to be vi remain viable democracy should form the bottom and um, uh, the bottom of uh, the system but there is <clears throat> a separation of the leftist and rightist for example the Trump phenomenon in the United States or Brexit in the UK and there is a surge of populism elsewhere in the world therefore there is a kind of a resistance against the political elites here in Japan, we have the Abe administration, which uh, is considered unstable for many years. Uh, European nations and America, which are uh, they suffering or experiencing some uh, political instability. But I think uh, this kind of situation may come to the shore of Japan in the future. I think 10 years and in 15 years' time, there's going to be uh, the, there was the liberalism, uh, liberal, uh, neoliberal policies, and in a similar way, there's going to be some kind of a shock and to take place in Japan. So it is uh, not something which is unrelated unto us. Now, MMT has emerged in this kind of a situation. What characterizes MMT? Uh, many things have been already explained, so I have nothing else to add. But what is important uh, in this case is that uh, household and the corporate uh, the budgets, uh, they are all different uh, from that of uh, the United States. The deficit, government deficit has to be, should not be increased. Uh, and those people uh, talk uh, in the analogy of household and the corporation, uh, that the, the debt uh, is um, twice as large as uh, GDP and government, gov government is uh, going to uh, default. But as uh, Professor Mitchell explained, and through MMT's lens, situation is completely different. In the case of households and the corporations, they are users of the currency. But the government is the issuer. Therefore, the issuer will not be able to have any time of uh, having difficulty. There is no financial constraint in the case of uh, the Japanese government. Uh, the, any constraint is a physical. Uh, needless to say uh, that um, everything is not limitless uh, if there is going to be a limitation and then that would cause a problem. So uh, 20, uh, trillion, 200 trillion or 300 trillion a year should not be the size, the amount of uh, the, the budget we have uh, to additionally spend. That is not what they are arguing. Anyway, that there is no default for the government, which is the currency issuing authority. Now, the, the, the debt of the current government is uh, going and to be a debt for the next generation. But that is not the case. The deficit of the government is the surplus of the private sector. So this, uh, the private sector is going to enjoy the surplus. Uh, the, uh, the, the financial asset is uh, going to remain in the private sector. Uh, therefore, we have to take the overall view of the sectoral balance. There was a seminar which was held on Saturday, and I asked several questions of uh, Professor Mitchell, and my questions were as follows. Now, expansion policy uh, comes from all the Keynesian. But uh, for all Keynesian, uh, what is the difference between all Keynesian and the MMT theorists? And the answer was, in the case of all Keynesian policy, the, in the case of economic difficulty, the econ uh, fiscal expansion policy is going to be permitted, but in the uh, economic growth period, it is uh, going to be important uh, for them and to reduce the size of economic uh, expansion policy. But when it comes to MMT, whether the government deficit is good or not, uh, it all depends on the context. 
And so uh, the MMT does not argue uh, that there should be some kind of a rebalance of the budget in the future. And in case there's going to be some problems, and then the government and surplus uh, the def deficit then should be changed. But it is not up, it is uh, not um, um, whether it is good or not is not uh, decided in advance. And I do agree into this kind of viewpoint. And Professor Aoki explained that when it comes to MMT. The effect of financial policy is not highlighted compared to the mainstream macroeconomists, in particular that the quantitative easing or negative interest rate, uh, MMTRs, are somewhat negative. Um, so compared to reflationary uh, theorists, uh, this is one important different point. As for the negative interest rate, the lowering uh, artificially the, the interest rate, uh, it may result in some drawbacks. And in addition to that, uh, all Keynesians uh, advocate the importance of government investment in the form of uh, public works and projects. And that is uh, centered at the core of the government policies. But uh, within the tenets of MMT, JGP, Job uh, Guarantee and Program, uh, should be the highlight. So direct employment by the government. Uh, according to my own interpretation, I think the, the political situation is uh, different compared to the past. Uh, that when it comes to public works projects, uh, male workers uh, were highlighted. But today, we have aged people as well as female workers. So not only public works projects, but also um, different types of uh, workers uh, should be employed in order to deal with and meet different needs. Anyway, MMT serves as a lens, in other words, the currency system, how it is uh, highlighted in, this, uh, in, the situ in the present day, and what will be the level of the financing capacity uh, by the government. And I think it is a lens to determine that. It does not argue uh, for specific uh, policy based on specific ideologies. But I think it will have an impact of a changing in the shift of the, the, the argument. In particular, it is important and for MMT to, uh, de to deny the constraints of austerity policy. For the past 30 years, the government policy has been focused on this auster austerity, austerity policy. So uh, even the left wing and the right wing uh, are always uh, on the same page. Uh, if there's going to be a, the the well left wing is for the welfare programs and then public works projects are reduced. That is their argument. Therefore, and then the right wing people may argue that uh, welfare programs, uh, Medicare and others are going to be reduced while increasing the amount of public works. And there is such a conflict um, between the left and the right. But if we are going to remove this essential essence uh, as part, which is auster austerity policy, and then uh, looking at the current uh, very um, underperforming situation, and looking at this kind of reality, we may determine uh, that austerity policy and can be removed. If that is going to be adopted and agreed, then the left and the right, both of them, uh, would not be able to think about uh, what should be abandoned instead of um, some preferences. So the policy dialogue, uh, the dimension is going to be changed. Uh, therefore, they are going to focus their discussion uh, on what should be most needed, environment, uh, the welfare, and the others. Uh, they will be able to have uh, a discussion to prioritize what they should be instead of uh, just uh, leaving something uh, unattended. I think uh, that would require an environment in which a lot of people will be able to discuss from different viewpoints. It is going to create a new political environment. And I believe MMT will be able to bring this kind of situation. So what the money should be used for? environment for one thing, uh, the aging population and policy measures, they are all important. But in my view, there are three important points. First, provincial governments 
uh, and uh, the metropolitan areas. If there is going to be a widening gap that is not going to be attended, where there is going to be a political deadlock. Therefore, there should be an inequality. Uh, the, uh, e the inequality uh, between the urban uh, and the rural um, should be eliminated. Now, in the industrialized nations, uh, we have a phenomena like uh, President Trump. Uh, in the UK, there is an issue of Brexit uh, leaving uh, out of um, uh, EU. In this uh, kind of uh, situation, there are a lot of uh, uh, analyses were undertaken, and uh, many people point out uh, that uh, the globalization and free trade for the past 30 years, after China entered WTO and uh, joining the free trade uh, uh, group, uh, there are some uh, hollowing out of employment and the loss of jobs. David Water, who is a famous um, professor, did the research, and I captured this um, from uh, the website. You can see the red-colored uh, areas are more uh, vulnerable um, to trade uh, from China. And on the right-hand side, red-colored areas are suffering uh, from trade with China, negative impact. And then if you overlay the, the difference uh, of uh, voting, uh, that uh, those vulnerable areas and voters uh, and tend to support Brexit and President Trump. I think uh, this is something quite uh, natural. Uh, the free trade is going to be promoted uh, and uh, the capital and can move around freely. In such a case, in industrial countries, uh, the manufacturing industry is going to suffer. So in the case of uh, pro uh, promoting uh, globalization, I think there should be fiscal measures and should be applied to those suffering regions. Um, so the policy uh, should be introduced in order to support these regions. But in the austerity policy, uh, such uh, options were not taken. And uh, that uh, they uh, everything was left to the local people uh, just uh, to try to survive uh, the tough situation. And then um, that kind of ideology uh, was pre prevalent. And the, there was uh, a growing opposition against the elite politicians as a result. I think the similar situation may happen in, the, in Japan as well, not only the United States, but also the UK. We are witnessing a similar situation. Now, this is the uh, demographic trend um, um, in the past uh, 30 years. Uh, Tokyo and uh, Tokyo, uh, uh, the um, close to Tokyo areas, uh, they are the ones then that enjoy the growth in population. Uh, Aichi is another area. But uh, in most of other uh, regions and prefectures, uh, you can see a great decline in the number of population. And uh, this uh, is the income distribution. The red color are good uh, salary, the uh, Tokai region and uh, Tokyo. But the Hokkaido up north and the Kagoshima and Okinawa down in the south, you can see lower income strata. So. Uh, uh, the, you can see a great income gap uh, between urban and rural areas. In Japan, there is a concentration uh, of a population in Tokyo area. Professor Kawabata's data are captured in this slide. So uh, this shows the ranking of the countries that have the highest concentration. The sec top ranked is Argentina, and second uh, is Japan, and third place is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a desert country, and so there is a necessity uh, for Saudi Arabia and to have uh, one single concentration, but Japan should not be the case. So it is not only a result of the market competition, it is a result of the political decision the Tokyo Olympics and uh, that uh, the government is now uh, promoting accelerating investment in Japan to prepare for the Tokyo Olympics. And as a result, what we can witness is going to be a more problems, uh, depopulation, and there's going to be higher risks of natural disasters. Uh, and the national security risks may increase. Therefore, 
uh, it is not going to be a preferable thing uh, for any country to see one single city has enjoys the concentration of a population. For even for the political stability, this situation has to be rectified. Secondly, JG uh, joint job guarantee um, program. I think uh, the idea of increasing uh, the publicly employed uh, people. I do agree to that kind of idea, which is extremely important in the case of Japan. In the case of uh, Japan, um, the number of uh, civil servants is extremely low among industrialized nations. There are different uh, researches. Ten years ago, uh, Nomura Research Institute uh, carried out uh, this uh, international comparison on the number of uh, civil servants, not only the government civil servants, but also so-called the special corporations, public corporations and employees. And I think this is a very detailed uh, sur uh, the survey. Per 1,000, 42 is the number of uh, uh, employees in the case of Japan. You know, Germany, uh, excuse me, uh, the UK, uh, 97, uh, France, uh, 95, and the, Amer the United States, 73, and Germany, 67. Uh, that it has also been um, the pointed out that uh, there are there very few uh, people which are hired by the government. In the case of um, Japan, uh, it failed to increase the number of civil servants. Professor Maeda of Tokyo University uh, conducted a, a comparative study. Uh, the, num the decline of uh, the number of civil servants started in the late 1960s. And and this uh, small number of uh, uh, civil servants uh, is related uh, to the fact of a less number of uh, employed uh, female workers because uh, women and can be employed in large number uh, by governments. And I think uh, in Europe and the United, uh, the United States that is the case. Um, the female part of the labor participation, participation is low because of uh, the less number of uh, civil servants in Japan. In light of this, of course, uh, there should be a detailed discussion about uh, to what extent the number should be increased. But going forward, I think it is extremely important uh, for the government investment to make investment in increasing number of uh, civil servants. Lastly, uh, that infam infamous uh, reputation uh, of um, Japan, that uh, the public expenditure in education is lowest. Uh, there is a recommendation, even the recommendation from the OECD. And in 2016, the, there, was an, uh, o, there was a report released by OECD. Um, the educational expense uh, per GDP is 2.9 percent, and which is the lowest for the three consecutive years among 35 uh, OECD members. In the post-war era, uh, the education was highlighted, and by that is just a myth in today. It is not education country. Uh, in particular, what is most important and problematic is higher education. Uh, about 50% uh, of the expenses spent um, by other OECD members. Those uh, mem OECD members are increasing the expenses on higher education, which contrasts uh, with the current situation of Japan. It is uh, such a very infamous situation. Looking back on the past data, according to the World Bank data, uh, the educational expenses uh, per GDP, uh, I think around 5% uh, in the past, relatively high compared to other industrialized nations. But after the bursting of bubble, uh, when the Japanese government started austerity policy, the education expenses uh, were capped. Therefore, in the 1990s and onwards, uh, among the major uh, industrialized countries, the educational expenses uh, percentage is increasingly low. Into 30 years and 40 years, the Japan's econ economic competitiveness is going to be ruined. And I do understand this kind of situation in the university. Compared to 30 years, research capacity has declined so sharply. The left-wing people complain about this, but not vocal enough. And the conservative people 
How come they do not complain about this kind of situation? Education is a pillar of the state. This has not uh, been avoided, uh, the, the slashed. Education was the pillar of uh, and the state build up. Uh, but uh, looking back, at, uh, looking back uh, for the past 30 years, uh, the government has uh, is not uh, spending much time, much money. Uh, from the MMT's uh, viewpoint, it is not uh, either or education or others. So both right and left, and both rural and uh, urban areas and should um, build a new framework for the discussion. And I think we are standing at the turning point. From that viewpoint, MMC, MMT is of very uh, large significance. Thank you very much.